This video will focus on the technical maintenance of depth measuring devices used on ships, particularly the hand lead line and the echo sounder. If you have been watching my other videos on the topic of echo sounder, then you should be familiar with what an echo sounder is and what is its principal operation. If not, then please watch my other videos. The description of those videos are provided in the description section below. This video will only focus on the technical maintenance and the performance standards required for depth de measuring devices such as echo sounders. Right? Because investigations have shown that many groundings of ships could have been avoided if the depth sounder had been maintained to correct working order and switched on at an earlier stage. This is especially true when the course passes over sea bottom that is as according to the chart. In such cases, the echo sounder can give additional indication of the position of the ship and provide the information needed to take the correct decisions for safe navigation. Let's start with the maintenance of the hand lead line or why a hand lead line is used. So the vertical depth and the indicated depth can change over time. Therefore, it is advisable that manual means like hand lead lines should be used for measuring the depth of the water and the reading should be compared with that obtained through the echo sounder. The hand lead line should maintain a specific logbook to allow comparison of such results. And this procedure should be incorporated in your plan maintenance schedule for the equipment of echo sounders as well as hand lead line. Opportunities should be used when the vessel is at anchor or alongside because that's the time it's easiest to use the hand lead line as it's a manually operated. Then vessels can also carry out a bar check that allows comparison of sound recordings. So for hydrographic purposes, this is an accurate method and it is often used for the calibration of the echo sounder. In this case, a rectangular tube filled with air is lowered in a horizontal position beneath the ship to a known depth. This is normally happens in the forward part of the ship and ropes are used to lower down the rectangular tube. The air in the tube then reflects the pulse and causes its depth to be indicated by the echo sounder. By comparison, any error is then revealed because you know the depth lowered previously, you can compare it with the depth obtained through the echo sounder. The advantage of this method is that measurements can be affected at any desired depth as long as there is sufficient water under the keel. But you can only use this normally on small crafts. Stylus rotation check. A technician can determine the actual RPM of the stylus arm rotation with the help of the tachometer and can compare them with correct settings as per the manufacturer and make adjustments if required. Therefore, it is important to record in the sounding log if any large discrepancies are noted frequently. Other checks that can be done in the dry dock will make sure to take care that the transducer of the echo sounder is not painted over. As a precaution, sometimes a very light coat of paraffin wax or tallow is applied at the transmitting surface of the echo sounder, which will restrict the paint from the sides going over. But later, when the vessel is refloated and moves along, the paraffin wax will wash off and not insulate the face. Make sure that any marine growth is carefully removed from the transducer window and check for the damage to the window such as cuts, abrasions and tears in the rubber. Coat the window in grease to prevent paint from adhering to the surface. Cover the transducer with plyboard or similar to prevent dry dock workers from damaging the face with scrapers or high pressure washers. On departure ensure the protection is removed and the grease is wiped off. Whilst in the dock, open the transducer coffer dam and inspect for corrosion and signs of leaks, etc. In terms of care and maintenance, well, this part deals with the maintenance work that may be done by the user, that is you. Major repairs and overhauls should be left to an authorized service engineer or technician. You must always follow the procedures as outlined in the manufacturer's manuals. However, in terms of cleaning, you can keep the cabinet clean and dry. If desired, the cabinet may be polished with a good car so it does not get easily soiled by frequent touching. Take care not to wax the acryl window and front plate. This should be cleaned with ordinary soap and a wet cloth. In terms of transducer maintenance and dry dock, I have mentioned some of it before. I will repeat myself. The transducer normally needs little attention. However, the radiating face should be cleaned when dry docking. Use synthetic soap. Marine growth may be removed with a piece of wood, whereupon the radiating face of the transducer is carefully cleaned with fine grade sandpaper or emery paper. The radiating face of the transducer should never be painted. The recorder should be cleaned at regular intervals. A brush is fine for this purpose. On chart recorder types, it may be necessary, 
by to brush or dust off the excess coating residue of the sensitive paper. So the paper that is used by the echo sounder to record the depths is a heat resistant paper and when the stylus arm moves on it due to the movement of the stylus and the recording of the depth on the paper normally the echo sounder collects a lot of dust you should brush it off with a brush. In terms of oiling normally no oiling or greasing is required however if necessary apply one drop of oil on moving parts as may be supplied and suggested in the manufacturer's manual. Other routine checks that may be carried out, make sure if there are any, any input that is going on into the echo sounder such as lag, long or draft etc is correct and accurate. Ensure that the date and time function is set correctly. The paper is being fed correctly at regular intervals. Inspect and change the stylus as it wears out. Normally a spare stylus is provided otherwise order one from the manufacturer. And inspect the main stylus belt as this takes the maximum load and can wear off due to the movement. It might perish after some time, so make sure that the stylus belt and the gearing belt is in good condition. Let's now move on to the power performance standards required for the echo sound. The all marine equipment required on board vessels is to conform with the performance standards. All right, so performance standards keep changing, but this one I think this is still correct. Uh, but uh, viewers are advised to cross check it once. Because uh, the, in terms of echo sounder, the IMO performance standards are applicable for ships speeds up to from 0 to up to 30 knots. In terms of sound speed in water for the purpose of this standard is set at 50 meters per second. In terms of functionality, under normal propagation and seabed reflectability conditions, the equipment should be capable of measuring any clearance under the transducer between 2 meters and 200 meters. The main display the primary presentation should be a suitable graphical display which provides the immediate depth and a visible record of soundings. The display record should show at least 15 minutes of soundings. Secondary displays if fitted such as uh, digital displays should not interfere with the main display. In terms of pulse repetition rate PRR or pulse repetition frequency PRF, the pulse repetition rate should not be slower than 12 pulses per minute on the deep range and 36 pulses per minute on the shallow range. In terms of rolling and pitching, the performance of the equipment should be such that it will meet the requirements of the performance standards when the ship is rolling plus minus 10 degrees and or pitching plus minus 5 degrees. If more than one transducer is fitted, depths for each transducer should be displayed separately and a clear indication of which transducer is in use should be shown. If data is stored, must record to paper or other means to be provided as a proof of data recording and recordings should be retrievable. Records must show depths in associated time for 12 hours. In terms of accuracy, based on sound speed in water of 1500 meters per second, the tolerance of the indicated depth should be either plus minus 0.5 meter on the 20 meter range scale, plus minus 5 meter on the 200 meter range scale, or plus minus 2.5 percent of the indicated depth, whichever is greater. In terms of malfunctions, alarms and indicators, minimum depth alarm, both visual and audible with mute function should be provided when the water depth is below a preset value. This indicates to the officer that the ship may be in danger. A power failure alarm should also be provided. In terms of ergonomic criteria, the function of the rain scale selection should be directly accessible to the user and the settings should be visible in all light conditions for rain scale and preset depth alarm. Clear indication or presentation information regarding marks or depth marks at intervals not larger than one tenth of the range scale in use should be provided and time intervals not exceeding five minutes. So your depths should be provided for the last five minutes. Paper recording when clear indication should be provided when the paper remaining is less than one meter. This indication is normally provided by a red mark that indicates that the paper might be finishing very soon. In terms of presentation of information, marks or depth marks and intervals not larger than one tenth of the range scale in use should be provided and should be marked at intervals not exceeding five minutes. Design and installation should be as per the latest IAM resolution and in terms of interfacing, digital output complaints to international standards should be available. So if your echo sounder is feeding into another equipment, bridge equipment, it should be as per the international standards. So I hope this short video on the performance standards and the technical checks and maintenance of echo sounder was useful to you guys. Please watch my other videos on echo sounder as well to make sure you have a good and holistic understanding of the bridge equipment. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon with my next video. Bye guys.